Good morning, afternoon or evening, ladies and gentlemen, all in crypto here and welcome back guys. What is going to be nothing short of another jam-packed daily market update on this triumphant Tuesday. As always, we have a hell of a lot to cover. And as we have such a big event taking place on Wednesday, the Fed is set to cut interest rates for the first time since uh, 2019, so nearly five years we will be starting the video off there. We're going to be talking about global liquidity. We're going to be talking about probabilities. We're not going to spend too long on that, however, as we did do a live stream, a nearly an hour long live stream yesterday, where we really looked at what to expect on Wednesday, what the ramifications were going to be, so on and so forth. And we sort of went from macro right the way down to uh, more micro stuff in regards to our small but very significant market that is going to become infinitely more significant. So we will be starting the video off there. Um, Global liquidity doesn't just come from the US. You have a lot of central banks set to essentially cut interest rates or, or make interest rate adjustment. We'll be looking at M2, which is the monetary supply. Then we're going to be going back to something that we spoke about a long time ago in regards to Stan Drucker Miller when he sold NVIDIA to move down to the IWM. There is a correlation between the Russell 2000 and Bitcoin. Of course, it makes sense. Bitcoin really does move as a higher beta uh, risk asset play. So we will be highlighting that once again. We'll be looking at Bitcoin, of course. Then we're going to be talking about Trump's new cryptocurrency. Now, I'm not sure how legit this is. It might be. I want your comments in the comment section. Uh, World Liberty. There is a video of him apparently coming out and announcing this. Seems like a bit of a risky move for him to do this. However, um, this was circulating on Twitter. And then we also have news from the UK where they're talking about how blockchain could help the $14.5 trillion payment sector says a global trade group uh, and they're already trialing things with the likes of quant uh, and various uh, other things so as always guys brace yourself for another jam-packed daily market update on this triumphant tuesday and let's kick things off of course with the major event that is taking place this week on wednesday so we are how far is this off one hour one day and five hours away um, so by the time you're watching this, we'll be even closer to it. So tomorrow, and we'll probably live stream the event and you guys can watch it in with me and certainly watch your own power to say, and we'll give a bit of a kind of commentary on it all as it's taking place. The Fed is set to cut interest rates. And there's been lots of takes on this. Lots of senators uh, from the Republican side calling for a 75 basis point rate cut. Um, my expectations have always been, and we're getting more confirmation of this, that they we're going to do a 50, not a 25. They, you know, they've got the room to do so. We spoke about that in our live stream yesterday based on where other central banks are at and how they kind of coordinate in regards to letting the smaller central banks go first before the uh, US central bank goes, which obviously has broader ramifications. It's a bigger market, so there's going to be a lot more volatility and they, and they, want, it, they want the dollar to kind of come down in an orderly manner, not a fast one. And the dollar will be coming down. That's why all this is relevant. Certainly dollar weakness in regards to uh, risk on strength. And we're getting confirmation of that really across the board. So the probabilities are now 65% that they're going to do a 50 basis point rate cut. I think that's good. 25, I think, is still good. Anything above that is spectacular. Obviously, a no cut would be uh, pretty detrimental. And I can't wait for them to just go ahead and cut so that all those people in the comment section can now move on to something else uh, in regards to telling me that they're not going to cut rates. We want opposing opinions on this channel. But if you're going to bring opposing opinion, bring your reasoning to why you believe that. Everyone has opinions. The ones that are worth listening to are the ones that can be backed up. And that's what we try and do. We give you our outlook on the markets based on uh, the reasoning that we have um, come up with to derive our uh, view on things. And things are being followed very, very well. The altcoin market has taken a little bit longer than expected. But certainly if we had just gone back and looked at historic cycles and how long the altcoin market takes to really get going, we're, we're in a perfect situation. It takes around about 214 days after the halving for altcoins uh, or certainly that Bitcoin dominance to roll. We think we are not too far off that. That would take us into November if we're to follow suit. Lots of uh, takes coming in. Fed to cut rates by a quarter point with a soft landing expectation, according to CNBC Fed survey. I think this is slightly off. I do think the soft landing scenario is one that we've been uh, talking about. In fact, uh, we agreed with Larry Fink going into this year. At the back of last year, he said there's going to be no landing. We've agreed with that. Um, we don't think the kind of uh, SHIT storm comes until the latter half of 2025, if at all then. You've got the European stocks pushing higher with central bank decision in focus. Commerce bank shares uh, hit 12 year high you've got lots of stocks doing quite well there's some news on intel although intel's been smashed we've looked at the dax the dax made our target in fact we've even looked at the dax in relation to um it kind of this is bitcoin 
This is the DAX. DAX did the very same thing as Bitcoin. We looked at many, many examples of this and ultimately think Bitcoin still has a, a broader uptrend ahead of it and the DAX still has higher targets. The stars are aligned. This is the beautiful thing about being a technical analyst. Um, we kind of unlock the cheat codes of the markets, if you will. We'll talk about Bitcoin more broadly and what it's currently doing. Of course, all of this is significant to us in regards to global liquidity and what that means for risk. And the global liquidity cycles do have us going and peaking going into 2026. And we think there's a number of things. The markets are technically aligned for that. They look very similar to where this is. Um, and uh, also, there's a fundamental reason to expect this to play out with the Fed, central banks lowering interest rates. With the JPY carry trade unwind, you saw the opposite of what's about to take place with larger central banks. It, it, it's kind of simple, really, when you break it all down in the manner that we do. On top of that, uh, more than three-fourths of the 350 billion rise in USM2 in the past year has been monetization of government deficit. This is continuing to grow at a rapid rate, by the way, uh, in terms of government deficit. You know, they, 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 the, the Fed has a mandate of inflation. Inflation came out at 2.5%. Their mandate is 2%. They said they didn't need to get to 2% to start lowering it. They also have a reason to lower interest rates to try and goose the economy in regards to the jobs market. And on top of that, they've got pressure on them in regards to the deficit, which when they have these high interest rates, it, 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 at some point, given the size of the snowballing debt system that we have, Q T becomes QE um, because you have to service that debt, you have to fund that debt, you have to monetize that debt. And this is how you end up in a kind of hyperinflationary um, situation. And in many regards, it's not hyperinflation, so to speak, but it, it, it's kind of, we're there really in regards to the currency systems. And this is why investing should be on the top of everyone's radar. We happen to think crypto is going to be the best performing investment. Um, and that's a bet we've taken. My money is truly where my mouth is. Do check out the Patreon, guys. Do become a Patreon. We've got a meeting with the Patreons tomorrow. Um, but this is rather interesting. And, and I want to highlight this. So we, we covered this a while ago as a kind of green light in regards to our thinking and Stan Druckenmiller very much being on the side of it. Stan Druckenmiller has provided 30% or 30 year, retur 30 year positive returns. Whether you like the guy, whether you don't, his track record speaks for itself. You know, we always get someone on Twitter or someone talking about why he's no good. And it's like, okay, well, can we see your returns or can we see anything, you know, to, 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 to give us evidence in regards to why he shouldn't be somebody to listen to? In my opinion, you want to listen to believable individuals. Um, who is the guy that did the Ray Dalio spoke about that? You know, Ray Dalio's books are well worth a read quite long. Uh, you know, there's some interesting things in there, like the fact that you wouldn't have the chicken nugget without him because he he, he sort of learned how to fix. Or, or um, one reason you didn't have the chicken nugget was because they couldn't fix chicken prices because they couldn't fix grain prices. And he came up with a way of doing that in regards to futures, uh, which is very interesting. So he has, uh, you know, there's there's believable people out there in the market you should listen to. And I think Stan Druckenmiller is one of them. And this was a report that we looked at back in May. Stan Druckenmiller sold NVIDIA, a large cap, to move down into the IWM, which is a small cap. And we said, okay, what he's betting on there is the environment and actually, in some ways, he's kind of betting on Bitcoin doing well also. If the IWM is going to do well, Bitcoin's going to do well. And this is a correlation. This is great, by the way. I did uh, drop a comment on this. Um, I'm not, not familiar with this individual before. Um, but what he's highlighting is the IWM and the correlation with Bitcoin. And you could even throw the dollar on here, like we have done, and show you that there's an element of dollar weakness in this that's generally good for risk. Markets are correlated. There's kind of levers to them, if you will. And when you can understand those levers and then technically look at the markets and say, okay, they're positioned for these levers to take place... Bingo! When it walks, talks, and quacks like a duck. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a duck. So this is interesting. I haven't actually looked at this myself. First time looking at it. Um, although we kind of knew that Stan Druckenmiller's move was a bet on risk more broadly. Bet on Bitcoin also. Uh, obviously, though, he's not bet on Bitcoin. I'm sure we will see that come in the future. Certainly as, you know, I, I think in the longer term trajectory, uh, Bitcoin dominance is going to the 20s. I can't wait for that because the Bitcoin maxis get silenced after calling everything other than Bitcoin an SHIT coin. You don't understand distributed ledgers if that's your take, I'm afraid. Uh, you probably understand Bitcoin and understand the speciality and, and the special nature and divine nature, in my opinion, of it in regards to how it came to us. It makes us a little bit worried um, and everything else, but you, you, you don't quite understand um, the fact that distributed ledgers can really be used for anything. And, and Bitcoin really is just a deep-in network. All these computers con computing the Bitcoin network where you can use that computing power for other things other than running and mining Bitcoin. Um so there's lots of things confirming. Like I said, I don't want to spend, you know, we've really covered the bulk of it. Stick to the plan, guys. Things are coming to fruition. Um, we've covered this to death. We did a, a, a linear hour long live stream where we spoke about what to expect on Wednesday. Do go and watch that from yesterday. We're going to be doing a lot more live streams. Great way for us to interact with you. And certainly when this bull market gets underway, we'll be doing them daily. 
on top of the daily market updates, on top of an evening video, on top of shorts, on top of, you know, we're across all platforms now. We're building the team. All in crypto, hopefully, is going to become your one-stop shop. And I can't wait to sort of take everybody on that journey with me. We're very close to that 100,000 subs. We will be doing a charity, um, sort of uh, something for charity as a result of that. And that's something that um, we're going to enshrine. Certainly, when we get over 100,000, we might do it every 5,000 subs on top of that or every 10,000 where we, we, we look to get involved with charities and really get on board with um, giving back as a result of your support. Uh, that's something that, you know, I've always wanted to do my... Uh, both parents um, have been massively into charity at various points in their lives to the point where some of them have even spent years abroad, um, you know, uh, doing various things. So I feel like I'm not doing my part just yet, but that's to come. Side note, totally. Um, so the macro situation is set. Bitcoin very much set. There's a number of technical confluences here. We've, we've ran you through similar Bitcoin charts that have all led to uh, broader continuation. You've just got to take this midpoint. That's what we're really waiting for here. And I don't think you're too far off it at all, guys. I really don't. Um, you're sort of coiling up around here, marginally lower lowing. It won't be long before you take this. When you do that, altcoins have capitulated in this. They'll, they'll rock it in the same kind of manner. We've got lots of targets on altcoins. Lots of altcoins look great. We've been continuing to do videos on altcoins in regards to them breaking out. I wrapped a great video up yesterday with uh, the H bar bull in regards to Hadira and some of the questions people have on that, some of the controversy and, and, and why actually you should be paying attention to Hadira. Um, I like the fact that they are uh, part of a kind of board with Saudi Aramco and, and the largest oil producers in the world and some of the largest companies in the world and they're the only blockchain company in there. But we can cover that in a different video. Stick to the plan when it comes to Bitcoin. Um, we had news yesterday. Breaking. This is from Jack the Rippler. I'm starting to follow the Ripple guys, uh, the Ripple guys um, now um, because we're bullish on Ripple, of course, technically and we see fundamental reason for it to do well. Breaking, Donald Trump will launch his crypto exchange today. He sounds like Brad Garlinghouse, slow and outdated banks. And of course, this is World Liberty Fi. Eh, I don't know about this. I don't know how legit this is. I really don't know. I don't know whether somebody's just come along to him and said, listen, can we do this and can you get behind it? But we do know he's very crypto friendly. Um, and I think he is a more positive outcome for the crypto space if he wins than uh, Harris. That's just my own take. Um, we did comment on the debate a little bit and said that we thought Harris did significantly better than I personally thought she was going to do based on Trump's. Uh, performance in regards to these debates just my own take we need to move away from thinking that somebody with an alternative opinion to us is an enemy i don't see people that have different political views to me as enemies and you know we can move on from that um some other interesting news certainly that i found was this was from coin telegraph blockchain could help uk's 15 point or 14 dyslexic can be mumbling my Letters up there, $14.5 trillion payment uh, sector, says Trading Group. Trading Group UK Finance hailed experiments on the regulated liability network as a success, but called for further talks with regulators to develop a system. Um, we know that the US, uh, the UK actually came out recently and said they're going to start to, uh, there's a bill to legislate crypto as personal property. I don't know if that's a good thing given the government that we have and given what they're going to be announcing in October because they're going to be taxing the hell out of personal property. They're going to be taxing the hell out of everything. Um, and we'll see what happens. We may start vlogging our escape from the West. Um, you know, it's a shame. I'm a true Brit. I've got Irish, Welsh, English and Scottish blood that flows through my brains, uh, brains, veins. Um, but... You know, we're not going to suffer some of the kind of, uh, I guess, grievances that are being thrust upon the UK citizenship in the name of helping them. It's, it's you know, you don't, you don't need, you only need half a brain to sort of work out what's going on here. But um, blockchain could help. You know, this is the way. It's going to change absolutely everything. This is a report they did. Um, it mentions Arthur. It mentions Quant, very interestingly. Um, and of course, we know Gilbert Verdrian is, is, is very sort of, you know, he, this is what he does, basically, if you look at his track record. So the stage on a macro point of view is absolutely set, ladies and gentlemen. Certainly when we look at the cryptocurrency space, it's very much positioned to do well, along with the rest of the markets. We looked at the IWM there, very interesting. Let's get ready to rumble, guys. It's coming. I think October will happen. I think we're going to have a great end towards the year. I think this is when things really start to kick off. That's going to see, We're going to see continuation into that and cycles play out into 2025. Let's get ready to rumble, guys. That's it from me. Um, I know it can sometimes be quite tough to be in the crypto space, but hold your heads up high. You are and have the foresight to be interested in a industry when nobody else is. Nobody's interested in crypto right now. We are and we shall benefit as a result of it. That's it from me, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to love and leave you on that note. If you've enjoyed the content, like is appreciated. So as a comment and I'll see you all in the next one.